Hi everyone, my name is Edie Ann and I'm here to show you how to create an event so that you can do a virtual online party. Ready to get started? Let's go. So for the first thing you have to do is decide how you're going to create or where you're going to create this event from. You have the ability to do that from your fan page, you can do it from within a group, and you can do it from your personal page. Now, there are differences on the types of events that are created from those locations, okay? If you do it from your personal page, you have the ability to have it either per, uh, private or public. If you do it from your VIP group, it's gonna be public, but it's only going to be shown within the group that it's created in. So only the people that are in that group will be able to see that event. So technically it's private, but it's public to everybody in that group. From a fan page, it will be automatically public, okay? So anybody that has the ability to see your page is going to have the access to that event. So you need to decide where this event is going to take place. If, you are if you're a consultant and you're creating it for a hostess, you're probably gonna wanna do it from your personal page so that it can be created private and she can become a hostess and invite her guests into your party. If you do it from your fan page, then everybody is going to have access to that event, which means that it's not going to be just her guests. So if we're going to try and keep a, an online party to as close to a home party as we possibly can, we want it so that her guests have the ability to commingle in that event by themselves and not have to have strangers coming in. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do it from your personal page so that you can create it for a hostess. The way that a, an event is created is pretty much the same no matter what location it's created from. Um, the only difference is that you're going to be at that location first before you actually say you're gonna create the event. So if you are on your fan page, um, you are going to go, let me get to the fan page, on the left-hand side. now. For creation purposes and training purposes, we're doing this from a desktop because it's ultimately a little harder to do on a mobile device. And I think that it's a better fit to be able to create it on a desktop, okay? So scroll all the way down to on the left-hand side, you're gonna see where it says events on your fan page. You're gonna go into the event page and the button that we're looking for is plus create event. You're going to click on that and you're going to create your event from there. Now, if you're in a VIP group or in a uh, customer group, from there, you are going to click on events on the left-hand side over here. It tells you the events that are in this group and plus create event on the right-hand side here to create the event. We're going to go right to the home page, which is going to allow us to create an event from our personal profile. So from here, if you scroll all the way down on the bottom left, you're gonna see where it says create ad page group event or fundraiser. We're gonna go ahead and click on event. What that does is it opens up a pop-up for us. This is our little box that's gonna allow us to create the event in with the information that we want. You have two choices. You can create or choose a theme, or you can upload your own picture. More than likely, you're gonna to wanna to upload your own picture. Maybe you're gonna make a banner that has the information of the party on it so people will know right away when they reach that event what it's all about. Um, you could use the theme. It's just a little bit generic, I think, for uh, the purposes of what we're doing here, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and click on Upload Photo or Video. I am gonna click on the picture that I want to upload. And from here, I can drag it and position it so that it's centered, or I can change it, sorry, I have an itchy nose, I, by clicking on the camera icon on the top right. If it's all set, then just leave it alone. The next thing we're gonna do is create an event name. Be a little creative here, okay? If you put in Kelly's Sensi Party, that's not very creative. You could um, sit and sniff with Kelly, okay? That's something that you could do. I don't know why my nose is itching so badly. Uh, you can be creative by using a name, the person's name. One of the things that you want to consider is that if they have not RSVP this event yet, they're not going to have all of the details as to what this party consists of and who it's for. So the more information you put on this screen is 
better because of the fact that this is one of the first things that people will see prior to them accepting the invitation. All right, so we're gonna go back uh, down now to the next thing, which is location. Honestly, guys, I put right here on this event page. And I go ahead and I click on the location here and it sets the location. The reason that I do that is so that people know right off the bat that they don't have to go to somebody's home, they don't have to go anywhere other than right in this event page and they can do that from anywhere, okay? The date is going to be the date of the party. Now, the start time is important because if you put it too soon because she's inviting people or whatever, it's gonna confuse the guests because that date will show up on this event page. So the event date and time needs to be the exact date and time that the party is going to start. So if you're going to be having the party next Tuesday at 8 p.m., that's where the start date comes into effect, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and say next Tuesday at 8 p.m., and you can set the time zone to whatever time zone you're in. Uh, usually it will default to whatever your computer is set to. Now, I'm going to suggest that you put an end time. And the end time for me, what I utilize it for, is to tell the folks when the party is closing. Not necessarily when it's going to end that night, but when the party will close. I usually give about a week. So I'm going to say Sunday night at 11 p.m. on the 28th is when this party will close. The other thing for doing this is that it will actually keep the event up in people's feeds and notification rather than kind of archiving it um, after the party is over. So by putting an end date that is later or when you're gonna close the party, we'll keep it active. Now here in the description is where you're gonna tell everybody what this party is about. <clears throat> and put the personal shopping link um put your personal shopping link to your website for this particular party and the personal shopping link is the link that you create when you created the party in the workstation okay so again this is for sensi consultants primarily that's why i'm talking their lingo um, but this obviously will work for anybody else that's watching. Um, so you're going to want to put in their personal shopping link to your website for this party in the description. You're going to talk to them about what they should expect. They should know who you are, who the hostess is. So in this description, you want to have some detailed information about the party itself. Okay. Um, I usually say yes to allowing guests to invite friends that is a decision that you need to make with the hostess, okay? If she doesn't want the guests inviting anybody, then you're gonna uncheck this box, okay? If, she was, if she's okay with it, then you go ahead and leave it checked. Now you can create your private event. Before we do that, I just wanna show you up here at the very top is where you have the option to switch between a public event and a private event. Understand, once you have created it, it cannot be changed you would have to recreate a whole new event if you needed to change the privacy on it, okay? So we're gonna do a private event and we're gonna create the private event. And now what it'll do is actually bring you to the event page. One of the things that I want to show you is if you're gonna share this event with somebody, you can cut, copy and paste this URL in the address bar up top, okay? So this is the URL to their event. This is something that you could give the hostess. Now, we need to go back in and we need to make somebody the hostess of the event because as of right now, I'm the only one that can invite people. Well, I'm not gonna be able to have the ability to invite the hostess's friends unless we're friends on Facebook, which is probably not the case. So we're gonna go ahead and click on edit. When we click, click on edit, it brings kind of the same screen that we had before, but if you scroll all the way down, you're gonna see where it says co-host. This is where you can add somebody's name to the list. Now, it's gonna say pending, and as soon as this invite is accepted, 
they will automatically become a co-host to this event. What that means is they can now invite people to this event. So they, they have the same rights that I do in this event. So it's as if they created it themselves, except you're doing it for them to eliminate the work for the hostess. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and click on save. And if you're wondering who this is, it's my daughter. <laughs> so she is going to get an invite to this test. Um, <clears throat> now we're gonna double check everything, okay? So we're looking at the name, we're looking at the date, we're seeing that it's right here in this event page. This is where the hostess is gonna do some inviting, okay? She's gonna click on invite. She's either gonna choose from friends from her friends list or she's gonna invite them by text or email. She can use her text phone number or an email address. And you also wanna make sure she understands that the maximum invite is 50. She doesn't want to invite more than 50 people because it's not going to be a personal event if she starts inviting her entire friends list, okay? So that's a whole other video about hostess coaching, but it's super important that your hostess is coached and understands these things before she actually starts inviting people to the party, okay? Now you're gonna be able to start posting, okay? You're gonna be able to write a post, put a picture, Maybe you can put a, a um, little verbiage about yourself, maybe introduce yourself. How you run your party is up to you, okay? Um, I typically will go live and actually do a very similar event or showing, like a show and tell, like I would at a home party. So I will show products, I'll talk about the products, I'll show them what they do, and I'll let them know that at specific times, such and such, I'm gonna be going live and I would love for you guys to join me at that time. They also have a new feature in Facebook that you can actually invite somebody on screen with you. Great idea to invite your hostess onto the screen with you, super idea. All right, so I hope you found this helpful. Um, I want to make sure that you have the tools that you need in order to have a successful online party. And the first tool that you need is to have an event or a platform to do that from. And if we're using Facebook, then you're gonna create the event from either your personal page, a group, or your fan page. Just remember the differences. Personal page can be private or public. A VIP group can only be seen by people in the group. And a fan page would automatically be a public event. All right, if you have any questions, let me know.